Hey folks, welcome back for more Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. We're up to episode 2, so let's jump in, since you know... Well, since I've already gone over everything, we'll just jump right in. Okay, we are on! Himself, the barefoot we are on indeed. Episode... Detectives reported that once he made episode 2, Fistable Bowling the Equipment Incorporated. We're going in 30 seconds. Bon Jewel, they call me Donnie. Please to inform me of the number of players, why don't you? Just me. How sad. You have no fiends. Go ahead and give me your name then. Well, I have fiends, but sudden lack of friends. I guess. All right. Now, here's what you're going to do. Questions will ameliorize before you. Select the boutonniere next to the correct answer. And you have to watch out for the timer that's ticking away. The more promptly you buzz in, the more regal tender you'll make. Or lose. Regal okay, tender. guys, let's get ready. Ten seconds. Be careful out there. Uh, blue collar check. Six. Blue collar five. check. Can fade to black? Ha ha. Three. Just calling to annoy us. Please wait for the beep, then hang up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cookie. And four out of five dentists agree I'm a great kisser. When did they agree that? Just you? Great. Looks like I'll have to do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> And your wrong answer of the game is being sponsored by Fistable Bowling Equipment, Inc. Bury yourself in your ball, right up to your wrist. Fistable Bowling Equipment. That sounds Sniff painful. Sniff out our sponsor's wrong answer of the game and you'll end up with a great prize and serious cash. <laughs> okay, no turning back. First question, Muppet Rabies. Considering their natural life cycles, which Muppet baby shouldn't have arms? Baby Fozzie, Baby Rolf, Baby Piggy, or Baby Kermit? We'll see, that's a bear, a dog, a pig, and a frog. Frogs are armless tadpoles during the early stages of their life cycles. So really, Baby Kermit shouldn't have any arms or legs. Or be able to talk, or sleep in a crib with a bear and a pig. Now that I think about it, there are a lot of problems with that show. Yep. This one's called Girl Got Issues. If Joan of Arc revealed her visions on the Dr. Phil show, what would he tell her? Let's get real, you don't really want to kill your dad. Maybe the dragon you're really afraid of is you. Talking to saints is just one tool from the religious shed. Or, get your head out of the gutter. Well, she did talk to saints, but Watch hey look, the a bowling reference. Here's where the money is. Joan of Arc claimed to hear the voices of Saints Michael, Catherine, and Margaret, which persuaded her to save France from the English attempt at conquest in the 100 Years' War. But Dr. Phil only answers to one voice, and that's Oprah. No, her head wasn't in the gutter. And you know what else is never in the gutter? A one-hole fistable bowling ball. Just like the one you just won from Fistable Bowling Equipment, Inc. Because when life gives you a 7-10 split, you should fist it hard. Today's wrong answer of the game is worth a tidy 4,000 bucks. There you go. Seems like good for power, but really, really bad for control. Let's try but what do I know? all headbands on deck. If the CEO of Old Navy required his employees to refer to him as the highest naval officer rank, how should he be addressed? The captain of cargo pants, the master commander of mittens, the lieutenant commander of leggings, or the fleet admiral of fleece? The fleet admiral. In the naval hierarchy, the fleet admiral is the highest possible ranking. But that's just his day title. At home, he requires his family to refer to him as the seaman of boxer shorts. Nothing I really want to know about a Say hello to Intern Art History 101. And yep, it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven names. For each one, tell me if it's a video with over a quarter million views on YouTube or a painting by Renoir. If it's a YouTube video, press the number one. If it's a Renoir painting, press the number two. Each one right gets you $300. But get one wrong, 300 bucks goes down to YouTube. And you've got 30 seconds to paint this picture. Ready? Let's go. 
Still love the music. Woman in a rocking chair. Three young girls at the piano. Dog eats dinner. You too. Great Lady Falls. You too. Young boy with a cat. History of dance. Evolution of dance. You too. Nude on cushions. As Renoir would say, dude, you totally pwned. Look, I dare you to find me a work of art in the Louvre that is better than a cat playing a piano. <laughs> Not I mean, it's note. a cat playing piano. Lay this question off, <laughs> no, keyboard no. cat. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> Where's the bomb girl? Why not try? It's in the mole. If I wanted to whack one mole worth of moles during a game of whack-a-mole, how many would that be? 3.14159 moles, 8,000 moles, somewhere between 1 million and 1 million x squared moles, or about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd moles. That really big one at the end. One mole is a unit of measurement used in chemistry that is equal to Avogadro's number, which is roughly 602 followed by 21 zeros. That's a lot of moles. And whacking that many moles will win me 25.3 billion Dave & Buster's prize tickets, which is almost enough to win an ashtray and a comb. I could use that comb. But That's round one. Couldn't. And you should be very proud of that score, because I'm not. Let's on those eyebrows. Then Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. Okay then, here we go. I call this one, Stop Eating Your Crayons. Which of these is not a Crayola crayon eating another Crayola crayon? An elephant eating a peanut, a manatee eating a salmon, a canary eating an inchworm, or a beaver eating macaroni and cheese? At least they're really, really creative with the names, but it's this one. I kid you not, Crayola has 120 of what they call core colors, and six of them are manatee, salmon, canary, inchworm, beaver, and macaroni and cheese. There is no elephant or peanut. <laughs> some other actual Crayola colors I could have used. A timber wolf eating asparagus, a pink flamingo eating cotton candy, and a beaver eating macaroni and cheese. Wait, did I already mention that? <laughs> I guess I did. Oh well, I just wanted to be sure I mentioned a beaver eating macaroni and cheese. Well, let's beaver eating macaroni and cheese on to the next question. question. Good for you. Here's one I like to call, My Eyebrows Are Lettuce and My Gym Teacher Married Me. Oh man, I had another really bonkers dream last night. Oh, eating pizza and watching a movie before bed, why can't I quit you? Glad these are back. Anyway, in the dream, I figured out a way to live among my cats, mayonnaise and poopsie by downloading my brain into a fake cat. I learned about and became a part of their cat culture. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. But then my mom attacked all of us and destroyed the giant tree where we all lived. Which is crazy because my mom really is a cat person. Anyway, what freaking movie was I watching last night that gave me such a weird dream? Watchmen, Avatar, Surrogates, or maybe Inside Man? A guy in a fake cat living with real ones in a tree. That'd be Avatar. Oh yeah, I was watching James Cameron's Avatar. Overall, it was a pretty amazing dream. I mean, I wouldn't award it best dream of the year or anything, but it was good. The part where I attached my ponytail to my cat was a little awkward, though. Blocking chickens picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Next, who arted? Which of these classic toys would French artist George Seurat probably enjoy the most? Play-Doh, alphabet magnets, light bright, or etch-a-sketch? You guys would laugh at me if I didn't know the works of someone named Seurat, would you? Yeah, probably. George Seurat is considered the father of pointillism, a painting technique using a combination of colored dots just like a light bright. 
And speaking of classic toys, Silly Putty is great if you want to counterfeit any works of art, except that they always come out in reverse and flesh colored. Open wide for Windows 7. Which musician could not use his or her name as a Windows file name? Kesha, Questlove, Will I Am, or Old Dirty Bastard? Yeah, you've been. If you let's play and have to record videos with question marks in the titles, you know this one. Windows file names cannot contain a less than, greater than, colon, double quotation mark, forward or backslash, vertical bar, asterisk, or question mark. So Questlove couldn't name a file with his name on a Windows computer. But he could just pick a different symbol. Well, almost any symbol. He couldn't be colon love. Sure he could. He never let me go. Coming up, hopscotch on the rocks. Okay, take a moment to collect your thoughts. This next question is going to require some high-level mathematical thinking. What I'm about to ask you has puzzled humans for centuries. Ready? How many squares do you make when you play four square? Four, five, six, or eight? No, you make five. There are the four titular squares, of course. Then there's the one big square they make up together. I was gonna ask how many squares there are in a tic-tac-toe board, but I didn't want to blow your mind. And there are 14 in the tic-tac-toe board. Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press the number one. $4,000 for a right answer, but you'll lose $4,000 if you're wrong. And most importantly, remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. What does your P mean? My P is just perfect. Good luck. We start with PBS, public. Broadcasting. No. There we go, public. Progressive. 1080p stands for progressive. Puff. Did. Human papillomavirus. No. 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 Not public. There we go. Phosphorus. Phineas. I hate it when they do that. Post Meridian. No. Yes. There we go. That's all she wrote! Well, you really know your peas. I bet you never fell for the old ICUP trick. ICUP. <laughs> 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 That's a wrap. Donnie, what's happening? So, are you thinking you'd like to enrage in more Tom Flummery? Did you eh, know no enraging in more Tom Flummery now, as but sodium as an order of French fries I will see everyone McDonald's. back next week for episode three. Until then, take care, folks. Of see has you later. Just as many and I will as many leave you as with the credits. Makes you think twice about in the commercials. Spinach, Why not? Doesn't it? Yes. Spinach. Is it really strong to the finish? Vote no on Proposition 14H and keep spinach and other vegetables out of our schools. I joined because I was looking for adventure. I joined because I wanted a challenge. I joined because I'm retired and they were looking for people over 55 who collect replica muskets. Civil War reenactments are all about staging a fake battle that will impress tourists on their summer vacation. Civil War reenactments are great because when you fake your death, you get to take a little nap. If you're thinking about joining, you should expect to eat a lot of stew and wear really itchy wool uniforms. You better like the music of people playing the spoons, because that happens a lot. This ain't your granddad's war. It's your great-great-granddad's war. The old, the eccentric, the Civil War reenactors.
2002, a film came out that changed the genre of fantasy suspense forever. Mine, the sunlight, as it dies. A weary sight, a weary eyes. No, witch, you will not weaken me. Salazar, throw me the pendant. <laughs> That film was Witch's Wheel 2. You probably don't remember the original Witch's Wheel. It was kind of a mess. But the sequel has left audiences wondering what happens next for nearly 10 years. This summer, the wait is over. Chauncey Zeigman presents Witch's Wheel 2. <laughs> 2. The silence of these woods is suspicious. <laughs> Salazar! Three elves! Quickly, Warlock! An incantation! Arriba. This July, prepare yourselves for... Witch's Wheel 2. 2. The sequel. To the sequel. It's collapsible, it's expandable, it fits in your pocket, it fits in your mouth. The Omnitool has it all. It's a wood chipper, it's a cat carrier, it's an oven, it's a cradle. It slices through glass and dissolves metal. It's a shovel, it's an ironing board, it's a bug zapper, it's a radon detector. Don't just buy one. It's a tampon, it's a broadcasting tower, it's a war memorial, it's a Spanish dictionary. Replace 10,000 clumsy tools with one Omnitool. It's an air conditioner, it's flattering pants, it's a bomb shelter, it's a healthy alternative to bacon. Plus, the Omnitool is 100% edible and fits comfortably in your pocket. It's a covered wagon, it's the face of God. It's a space helmet, it's a particle accelerator. Operators are standing by. Get yours today. It's a toy. It's a rifle. It's a walrus diaper. It's a lemon zester. Hi, I'm Garo Stanton. We at Stanton's Rhyming Dictionary rate our product so high, we really feel it's the best rhyming dictionary money can purchase. Other rhyming dictionaries might say they're the best, but we really feel we're better than all the others. You want rhymes? That's what you need. We've got a book of rhymes that's a pleasure to browse through. So check us out. Our dictionary is truly sublime. It's really the only place to go when you need two words that sound alike. Thank you. This Monday, catch the season six premiere of Farting with the Stars. And this season, we've got our most star-studded cast ever. C, Helen Hunt, Jim Caviezel, Leonard Nimoy, the guy from that one medical show, and the girl from that movie with the guy from Scrubs. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be hot, and it's not gonna smell good. It's Farting with the Stars, where the only thing louder will be the roar of the crowd. Monday at, whoop, excuse me, Monday at seven, be there. Celebrity Farts Impersonated.